Have you ever wondered how we turn dead dinosaur juice into horsepower? Well, most of us already do, but here in the Emi Kurama channel, we promote an environment of learning, so we'll start from the very basics. So to my Kuramatics out there, no shaming of people when they don't know stuff, capiche? We're here to learn and have fun. I promise we'll get to the more interesting topics in the future, but for now, I want everyone to be on the same page before we do. Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, we'll be talking about... Wait, this intro sounds familiar. Sorry guys, I can't animate visuals. So for some parts, we're gonna do a JSON and have our whiteboard over here. Hi, I'm your professor for today, Professor Amy Kurama, and welcome to class. Now listen up, or else. So the engine we'll be talking about today is the internal combustion engine, and specifically a four-stroke piston-type gasoline engine. You know, the one you usually find in cars. Now the gasoline piston engine wasn't the first of its kind to use an expanding medium to create propulsion. There was the steam engine that uses the same logic that predates it, but we won't talk about steam engines anymore. We'll go straight to the gasoline one. Now gasoline, as we know it, goes kaboom when ignited. So how can we capture all this released energy and convert it to something we can use? So what if we put it in a closed container, let it explode, kaboom! Actually, that won't work because the container is just gonna blow up. So what if we design a container that actually absorbs all of this explosive energy and convert it into like some sort of motion? Okay, drawing in VR, it's kind of harder than I thought, but let's go with it. So now we have this cylinder where we put the boom boom juice in and we have this object that will move when the boom boom juice goes kaboom. Now this moving part right here will capture all of that energy and move downward. And this is what you call your piston. Now this is what we can call now a combustion chamber because it's a chamber where combustion happens. So you have your cylinder over here and inside the cylinder you have your piston. So now as that piston goes down, how can we convert that downward motion into rotating motion, into something we can, you know, rotate the tires with. That's where your connecting rod and crankshaft comes into play. So now we have our connecting rod over here and our crankshaft over here. So as the piston goes down, it pushes the connecting rod, which converts our linear motion now into rotating motion. So great, that's our basic principle. We have our fuel, when ignites, pushes the piston down, which in turn pushes the connecting rod down that rotates our crankshaft. Now if you've been liking this video so far, that or need an anime character in order to have enough attention span in your goldfish brain to know how an engine works, don't forget to like and subscribe, and our other socials are actually down below. Alright, I'm gonna be honest, I'm kinda losing my mind using the whiteboard here manually. It's actually pretty difficult. So I'm just gonna overlay some, some, some JPEGs now because I've been recording for 1 hour 30 minutes now. <laughs> anyway, moving on. So we need to make this an automated thing, right? So now we need a device in order to get air in and exhaust out. And we also need a device to tell the fuel when to go kaboom. So introducing the intake valve, the exhaust valve, and the spark plug. The intake valve lets air in, the exhaust valve lets exhaust out, and the spark plugs tell the fuel when to go kaboom. So now we have all of our parts. What's the process in which we can make this a continuous cycle? If you remembered earlier, we mentioned that this is a four-stroke engine. That means it takes four strokes to create one combustion cycle. Now you tie those together and you get continuous combustion cycles. So what are these cycles? So first we have our intake cycle. Our intake valve opens and our piston travels down sucking in air fuel mixture. So connected to our intake valve actually is our intake manifold where either a fuel injector or a carburetor system sprays fuel into the air that the engine sucks in. Now after our engine has sucked in all the air fuel mixture it needs, the intake valve now closes and we now enter our compression stroke. With the momentum of the engine, the piston now goes back up in what we call the compression stroke so that it can compress the fuel just before the spark plug ignites it. Now the compression stroke is crucial because if you actually take gasoline like in a saucepan or like in a beaker and you light it up, it actually does not explode the way you think. It just burns. So in order to get that bang from the fuel, you actually need to compress it before igniting it. Hence, this is our compression stroke. So now as our compression stroke ends, our spark plug goes sparky spark. And finally, our boom boom juice goes kaboom. So now we're in the power stroke when the fuel ignites and pushes our piston down. So that piston is pushing down, pushing on our connecting rod, pushing on our crankshaft, and it creates the rotating motion that we need. And after the power stroke, we now have all of these gases that can no longer be ignited and needs to be expelled from the cylinder. Hence, our next stroke, the exhaust stroke. 
our exhaust valve now opens and as our piston goes up, it pushes all of the expent exhaust gases out your exhaust. And once all of the exhaust gases are expelled, the exhaust valve closes and that completes our four stroke cycle. So that's one intake stroke, number two is the compression stroke, number three is the power stroke, and lastly number four we have our exhaust stroke. Then it just has to start all over again. After the exhaust stroke, the intake valve starts to open, the piston goes down, and we're again in the intake stroke. And with that, we have a continuously running engine. And now we can use all of that rotating force on the crankshaft in order to power our vehicle. And this is the reason why, if you guys notice on your dashboard, if you look at your tachometer, that's the one that measures your engine speed or how much rotations per minute your engine does. If you note, your tachometer is always at like 600 to 900 RPMs because the engine needs this momentum to keep itself on. Once you stop it, like you stop the piston from moving, it can't continue the cycle. And that's why when you guys start an engine, you have to engage the starter. That's an electric motor that starts this whole process. It spins the engine until the engine can do its power stroke and it can sustain itself without the starter anymore. Whew! Recording this was harder than I thought. <laughs> Don't worry, I, I know it's kind of scuffed guys, but we'll, we'll, we'll do better next time. Congratulations! Now you know of one way of how to convert boom boom juice into a rotational motion that we can use. So coming up next on our next videos, we're gonna move on how the engine and its rotating motion goes through several devices before it actually goes to your tire and actually moves your car or motorcycle because it's the same with a, with a motorcycle. But don't worry if you can't remember all the four strokes since you're here watching an anime character teach you how an engine works, you're probably a degenerate. So all you need to remember is suck, squish, bang and blow. If you know what I mean, wink wink, ciao. Oh my god, it was so hard to film. I gotta I gotta plan better next time.